When is the right time that you should be selling your stocks? Over the last week or so, we've seen all-time highs day in and day out. Again and again and again is another all-time high in the market. It is crazy. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a strategy that I use for knowing when to sell a dividend stock or just in general. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you are brand new to the channel, my name is Bruce Wang. I talk about dividend investing, real estate investing, and personal finance on this wonderful channel. Um, there's a lot of new subscribers out there, so welcome to the channel if you're brand new. In today's video, we're gonna go over when should you sell a stock. And on top of that, I'm gonna be going over with you what I bought this week with the Robinhood Challenge and on M1 Finance as well. So let's jump right into it. So on Robinhood, we're seeing an all-time here on the portfolio, $15,078.96. Today alone, I'm up almost 1% on the portfolio, $117. If we take a look at uh, for the last year, I'm up almost $2,000, 15% of the entire portfolio, and this is not including dividends. In the last year, I've received over $450 worth of dividends. I think I showed you guys that in my last video, but in today's video, we're gonna go over something a little bit different. I added one brand new stock to the portfolio, and that is, scrolling down here, that is Walgreens. WBT, ticker symbol WBA, and uh, Walgreens at $54. So earlier today, this morning, I bought five shares at $54.43 for a total of $272. This is gonna be the newest addition to the portfolio. So there are a few reasons why I'm adding Walgreens to the Robinhood portfolio here. And one of the trading strategies or one of the dividend investing strategies that I use is called Dogs of the Dow. And uh, Walgreens, is part of the Dogs of the Dow for this year, 2020. So what does it mean when a stock is part of the Dogs of the Dow? Uh, this is a dividend strategy that I've been practice, practicing for the last two years. And uh, it basically means that this is one of the highest yielding dividend stocks on the Dogs on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And right now the dividend yield is sitting at around 3.4%, just under 3.4%. So with all that said, I think that Walgreens is very undervalued. I'm gonna be just uh, slowly dollar cost averaging in. R today was probably one of the best days to get in uh, for the new years. So um, I'm pretty lucky that I got in uh, when I did. A lot of brand new investors fall into the trap of buying stocks at all time highs, like Apple's at all time high, Tesla's at all time high. Those two stocks are great and all, great companies. But on the other hand, there's our, there are investors like me where I'm buying stocks that are on sale, companies that are not doing well. Um, those are That is where I find the most value and I think that, but over the long term, if you're just dollar cost averaging and not uh, buying whenever you see like a stock going into all-time highs, you should be doing all right. Uh, let's move on to the next stock that I bought for this week. So the second stock that I bought this week was AT&T. I bought one share at $38.37. This is the one of the biggest positions in my portfolio now at sitting around almost 10%. If we look at the total returns, I'm doing pretty well on um, AT&T, $123. So with this week's purchases, I increased my annual dividends for the entire year to by $11.31. All of these dividends will be reinvested into the, into the portfolio for a compounding effect. And uh, hopefully, I can't feel the effects right now because it's so small, but um, eventually down the line, it will get a little bit bigger and bigger. And this smoothly uh, transitions into my next topic is when do you know when should you sell um, a certain stock or not. So let's take a look at Apple here. I just got a notification that uh, today, Apple hit another all-time high, $318.30. Um, Apple has been on a ridiculous tear over the last year, 111% gains in the last year. Um, I bought one share of Apple way back when, when it was uh, $148 and um, total return so far is $170. I can't complain, but um, when it comes to Robinhood, it is really difficult. It is really difficult for me to sell anything because I only have one share of Apple, and that is why Robinhood is looking to do fractional shares. They better come out with fractional shares soon because um, I think a lot of the other brokerages out there are gonna overtake them if they don't. For example, if it was me right now, I would probably try to take some profits here, maybe sell 
you know, 5% of this position, but because I only have one share, I'm not going to be able to do that. So let's jump into M1 Finance and see uh, what you can do on M1 Finance and where my portfolio is at over there. Um, on a side note, I'm pretty close to getting this card sent out to me. Um, last time I updated you guys, I was like at 30,000. But one thing I noticed about the cash management system is that Robinhood is sending out about 3,000 of these cards every single day. So I'm moving up 3,000 uh, slots every single uh, day. And on top of that, if you click on the card here, you can um, slowly move up in your position uh, and you can click up to 1,000 times per day. I've been getting a lot of comments about that. Um, I thought everybody knew about this, but apparently not. So uh, just, a, just a little tip for you guys there. So I know the feeling that you get when, you know, you just need to do something in the markets. You know, we're in another crazy bull run right now where everything is just at all time highs day after day after day. So whenever you, whenever I get that itchy feeling of I need to I need to make a move, I need to do something, I usually go into my portfolio and I would just sell a really small portion of um, whatever stock that is up, you know, 10, 20, 30 percent. For example, I did a lot of this when uh, back in the day when Bitcoin was around 4,000. That is when I bought in on Bitcoin. And um, as Bitcoin was rising up slowly up to, you know, closer to $20,000, every few days I would just, you know, spend my Bitcoin. I would buy something with it. I would cash out maybe, you know, $100 here or there, $1,000 here and there. And that is how I generally take profits. So when it comes to taking profits and when it comes to selling your positions and stuff like that, um, it is a lot easier for me to show you guys this on M1 Finance. Um, on my M1 Finance portfolio, I'm sitting at $9,000. It's been a long time. It's been a long journey, but I'm at $9,000, almost about to crack 1,000, um, 10,000. Uh, I should be able to reach 10,000 by next month if all goes well and uh, we are gonna be continuing this bull run. But so far, uh, total gain so far from market is over one, is over $330. And, and when it comes to earned dividends, I finally cracked the $100 uh, earned dividends. And um, on every single month, I'm averaging around $30 in dividends from this portfolio. So if you guys wanna see my entire portfolio, links are gonna be in the description. And uh, if you guys wanna join M1 Finance, don't be afraid to use my links down there as well. So let's get back to the main topic of this video. When should you be selling a certain stock? Um, so let's take a look at some of the gains here. Technology is where I gain the most in my entire portfolio. And as you can see, I also have Apple in this portfolio. And since M1 Finance does fractional shares, I can buy or sell any amount that I want. Um, and I don't have to do it in whole shares. I can just buy you know, $10 or $100 worth, um, all depending on whatever I want to um, invest in. So what I could do right now is sell, you know, $20 worth of Apple. Um, all I would have to do to do that is just um, update this and take turn off auto invest. And if I and when I confirm sell here, order submitted, your sell order of Apple has been submitted. So what I basically did was sell 20% of my position in Apple. And now I'm able to collect $20 in, in profits, capital gains here. And this will be traded tomorrow on the stock market. If you're brand new to investing, you should know that you should not sell your entire position if your stock goes up 10, 20%. Just sell off a portion of it and collect the profits off the top. Um, unless you know that, you know, selling your stock, you can put it in someplace else where you can get a lot more money. But um, I'm not gonna be that guy to tell you that you can. I can predict the future and know where all of these stock prices are going. I'm just riding the wave like everybody else. Another reason why you don't want to sell your entire position is because if let's say Apple keeps going on this bull run, this crazy bull run that has been going on, and we see another 100% gain for you know whatever reason, this is just purely hypothetical. You do not want to miss that bull run. You want these stocks to just keep going and keep running as far as they can go. And taking a few percentages off the top will cure that itch of you having to do something. Um, you know, I also feel that sometimes now because like uh, when I see stocks go up 50% in the last 
few months here. You know, I, I think that I have to do something. But what I've learned is that you don't really have to do anything other than, you know, just sit back and watch it keep going up. And on the other end, you're going to have stocks that are not doing that well. And um, let's say, for instance, Brookfield Property REITs. This is one of my worst performing stocks, and it is only down 3%. So that just goes to show you how crazy the markets are right now. One thing you have to realize is that all of your stocks are not going to be home runs. All of your stocks are not going to go up 100%. Some of them, they're going to do bad. You bought these stocks for a reason. Hopefully you're not just buying stocks just because somebody on the internet is telling you to buy stocks. That is why, you know, I kind of go over why I'm buying these um, stocks that I go over. I'm not recommending any stocks to anybody. And, at, and as a beginner, you should know not to, you know, copy exactly what this person online is telling you to do. So I do like showing you guys what I'm doing and there are reasons why I'm buying certain stocks. And the reason I'm buying them might be completely different than why you're doing it. So for example, this stock right here, Brooks River Property, um, it is not doing that well. I have no, and I have no intention of selling this stock, even if it went down 10%, 15, 20%, I'm just gonna be, just be reinvesting all of my dividends and aggressively funding my portfolio to keep buying more of this Brookfield's property REITs. I'm buying Brookfield property because it provides me with great dividend income. It is a relatively stable stock in the REIT sector and BPR is one of those stocks with a really great uh, dividend score where it is relatively safe. One last thing I want to update you guys is that I'm gonna be moving my Vanguard portfolio, my Vanguard Roth IRA into M1 Finance and I'm gonna have to set up a brand new portfolio there and everything. Um, I talked with M1 support and uh, it's gonna take a few more days, maybe even up to a week, maybe almost two weeks, but uh, I'll be slowly keeping an eye on that for you because I think that I've never, I've never transferred funds like this back and forth before, so this is completely new to me um, and I'll be most likely making a video on that later on, but I'm just in the process of going over that, so I can't really tell you much. So dealing with M1 support has been pretty good. I'm hoping for the best. I do not know what I would do if I lost $13,000 on this transfer. Um, I can only imagine. But if you guys want to watch more videos from me, don't forget to watch these dividend investing videos, real estate videos. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I update you guys daily with what I'm doing. Um, on top of that, like, subscribe, hit that notification. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.